It's so good to be in the temple of God on this Friday morning. The world calls it as Good Friday. So I was just reflecting on certain important things that happened some years ago. But before I reflect on that, I thought I would just stop there on that word Good Friday. How can somebody's death and the day that he died be called a Good Friday? People who know the language dug deep into it. And they came up with three important things. Number one, people said it would have been God Friday. A Friday that God did something for the human race. Another group of people came up and said it can be the Holy Friday. Because this whole week, people consider it as a holy week. So they wanted to name it as a holy Friday. But very appropriately, they came up with one important word. Everything can be added into it. It can be a God Friday. It can be a holy Friday. And they coined the name. Good Friday. And this word Good Friday has been given to us almost 1,600 years now. Almost 1,600 years. This word called Good Friday has been used all around the world. When you think about what happened on that particular day, it breaks our heart. Some of the scriptures that we read today was really bringing us back 2,000 years into what happened on that particular day. So I'm just going to get into some of the people's shoes. I want you to come along with me in that journey and get into the shoes of some people. I can't expound everybody, but only few people who had some wonderful place in those chapters. I want you to come. And at last, we will come into the main person called Jesus. John's gospel chapter number 19, verse number 20, speaks out the last word that Jesus spoke on the cross. We have seven sayings of Jesus during where he said seven profound statements on the cross. And the last statement that he said, was mentioned only in this gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke omitted that. Only the writer John wrote it down and he mentioned what Jesus said on the cross. And the last word that he cried out was, it is finished. It is finished. In the good old Aramic word, it is called tetelestai. Everybody say tetelestai. Sometimes the language that we use is very, very important. A job well done is the only word meaning for the word tetelestai. A job well done. It was finished. So when you say it is finished, somebody started it. And we go to the journey of the Garden of Eden. There was a story that came six days. Six days of creation. And on the sixth day, he created human beings. That is the reason we put number six as the number for human beings. Number has a lot of meaning. Some people don't understand the value of numbers, but when it comes together, somebody told me the other day, Pastor, my wife is born on 7th, 
I am born on 7th. My two children are born on 7th. It's not a coincidence. Something has to be in it. Sometimes you may not understand certain numbers that are very important into your life. I and my wife, we always talk about one number which is quite important into my life. Even though there were some alterations when I was born. I was born, you know when, you know. I was born the next day of the, the, the well-acclaimed Fool's Day, they say, April 1st. Now, people don't do that. April 1st is having a prominent uh, meaning in it. But April 2nd, I was born. So, if you put it on the calendar, it is 2 and a 4, right? 2 and a 4. When we bought our first house, we did not know we were supposed to buy the 15 Lantana Road and that was where we went. And all of a sudden, it did not work and we came and bought our first house which is called 24 Lantana Road. Then we did not know what will happen to build our second house. Then, you know, things happened and we bought and we built our 24A Lantana Road. Then when it comes to buying the church, we did not know where to go. God really brought us into this place wherein it starts from 22, 24, and 26. Rosella Road. That is not the end of it. <laughs> the other day when I was writing a letter for some immigration purpose and I was wanting to put the postcode of Mangri, it is 2024. And I was amazed how God doesn't make a mistake. Number six is the number that the creation was complete. If you go into the text where we read, Jesus was on the cross for six hours. From nine o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon. When you count the hours, it was exactly Six hours he was on the cross. Sometimes you put together everything and say, he took up death, not just for you and me. He took up death for the whole creation. Because he loves everything that he created. Because after every creation, God said, it is good. It is good. And once he created human beings, another word he added up. It is not just good. It is very good. Come on, shake hands with your neighbor and say, you are very good. Sometimes you may not know that you are a very good person. Sometimes your children may think that you are a bad father. You are a bad mother. Sometimes your colleagues may think that you are a bad person. Your neighbors may think that you are a bad person. But understand the word bad is not there in the dictionary of God because he is a very good God. He created you and me as very good people. But what happened? One obedience which was broken by our first parents Adam and Eve led us into something that kick-started the journey of pain. There was no thistles, there were no thorns, there were no things that can prick your feet, but one mistake bought in thistles and thorns. Everything was good. Snake used to talk. <laughs> Those days, you know, people don't understand how different the world would have been. Animals could talk. Otherwise, when the snake came and said, good morning, Eve, my goodness, Eve would have freaked out. It was quite natural that every animal would come and speak because there are not too many people there. There are not too many animals there. It was a family. Everybody used to talk. And Eve was taken for a ride. And it started. What started? Shame, death, fear, agony. Everything started in the Garden of Eden. Somebody said, Adam was the warden 
of the garden of eden you got it adam was the warden and somebody said adam was the garden somebody say no when i say rhyming words it is like adam was the warden of the garden of eden and now our warden and the mrs warden were kicked out now this whole place was fenced by god's army the journey started people one after the other went away from god came back went away from god came back the whole bible is a journey of going towards god and going away from god when they come closer to god god blesses them when they go away from god god punishes them it is not that because god is a bad god it is because the bad was there in human beings and we were going away from god's presence so now god had a plan john 3:16 god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that we could be saved and that is the reason this day is called a good friday and on this particular day there are certain people of very importance that i thought i would just bring in one the first person that i thought will be mother mary people tend to forget her sideline her on this particular day but i thought i would bring that wonderful woman who took up all the blame of all the community to become the mother of god can you ever believe this word mother of god mother of god can there be a mother for god mary got that wonderful title she was the mother of god when god saw from heaven he wanted to take one person so that he can use that person to become the mother of god to carry himself in the human form what a beautiful selection when that selection comes it did not come with so much of joy in the community because that selection was against the natural principle of the world some things which happen very unnatural we cannot explain it quite nicely anything which is natural we can explain it doctors can come up philosophers can come up scholars can come up and tell this is how the natural thing can happen but god never chose a natural phenomenon to come into the world but he used a supernatural phenomenon called the holy spirit shadowed upon mary and she conceived a child it is a supernatural because something from above came down on human beings in the same way joseph who was betrothed to mary wanted to give up that relationship very secretly the bible says he was a gentleman he did not want to put down his wife he wanted to get away from this whole story of unnaturals he wanted to get out but all of a sudden again a supernatural encounter came and joseph stuck with mary now mary knew this child is god only mary you can imagine in a human terminology even joseph even joseph would have doubted the integrity of this wonderful woman called mary but only mary knew the reality that this child is god she had high hopes in him that would be one of the reasons that when the wedding of cana was happening she came boldly to 
Jesus and said, Jesus, there is no wine. Because she knew Jesus could do something marvelous. She had that knowledge, this child that was born in me is not just a human. He is God. He can do it. But during that moment, Jesus was silencing Mary and said, my time has not yet come. And in one of those words, it mentions in the language of Jesus, woman. Woman, my time has not yet come. That doesn't mean that Jesus disregarded the mother Mary. He would have told in love. You know, sometimes children, when they, you know, they want to, you know, talk to mom in a very good way or, you know, she, you know, the fun way, you know, Donita can come and say, hey, Diana, you know, that doesn't mean that she is having a disrespect towards mom, but in a love way that she says, hey, you know, I call my mom, Shushila, sometimes. It is not that I call her by name, but sometimes it is just the fun that I give and say, hey, what are you doing? You know? Now Jesus said, woman, my time has not yet come. You may not know my time, but when my time comes, things will happen. So Mary knew Jesus will do everything in his time. Welcoming the disciples on board, Mary would have been the most happiest person. A 30 year old man having so many disciples. She may be thinking one day, my child will become the ruler. He will overthrow the Roman Empire. He will become the king. He will bring peace on the land. She would have been reflecting on certain prophecies that were given in the book of Isaiah. She would have been thinking, this Jesus one day, I will be proud. But what happened on this particular day? All the dreams of Mother Mary is coming to a full stop. They are, she, she is seeing her son being dragged on the road. Some of you may not understand, but if you are a dad or your mom or a mom, seeing your child being dragged on the road, however bad your child is, your heart will melt. You will run any extent to save your child. You will not stand on one side and say, he is God, he can do it, he can handle it. All of a sudden seeing her child been beaten, he is in a situation, nobody is believing him. Everybody is talking bad against him. They are calling him names. They are pulling down the beard. They are beating him. Mary being a woman of the society who doesn't have a position like a royal position could only stand out there and beat her heart out and say, son, I can't do anything much. I can't protect you right now. Everything is gone. I don't know who is going to take care of me anymore. I thought you were going to do things different. But today, this Friday, everything is coming to nothing. I get into the shoes of Mary. Can it be a good Friday for her? I think this Friday would have been the most worst Friday in her life ever. People's abuse, people's misunderstanding, all she, she could bear. But this painful moment to see her son taken for a crime that he has never done. A mother who has seen only the good side of her son doing always good. Even when a point came, if you read John's gospel chapter number four, there was a point of time that Jesus was not even able to eat food. He was not even able to drink water. People were around him. 
people were wanting healing people were wanting people wanting counseling talking the house was flooded the family went to the extent of saying he has gone out of his brains mother mary would have been saying my son did all that he went through all the pain he sacrificed everything now people what are you doing with my child are you killing him jesus never said anything to mother mary he did not say mother don't worry i will come back in 3 days time no he did not everything was kept under cover from mother mary that is one among the important persons that i don't want to miss during this particular friday now the disciples i don't want to pick up one all the disciples put together they left their boat they left their job they left their family they just followed jesus believing jesus is going to take them into another level of promotion because jesus himself said you are not going to be the fishers of normal fishers you are going to be the fishers of men so it's a promotion that they all thought and that is the reason james and john wanted to sit on the either sides of jesus the sons of sabadi we call the sons of thunder we call they wanted to have positions who which were greater and they wanted to say who will be great and jesus had to rebuke them and say if you are able to drink the cup that i am drinking you can receive all those things so people in the discipleship group always thought i am going to be the leader you are going to be the leader peter you are going to be the leader james you are going to be the leader but on this particular friday all the dreams of the disciples were shattered and the bible says they spread out they spread out in the language of the gospel writer it is said they were sheep without a shepherd they became a sheep without a shepherd can you imagine their situation shepherds always take care of the sheep that is what we read in psalm number 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not be in want now the sheep has no shepherd everything is scattered can you imagine the disciples life one after the other they started betraying jesus they scattered one important personality is peter he loved jesus that would be the reason he said anybody leaves you i will never deny you i will never talk against you but jesus looked at him and said son today itself before the cock or the rooster crows twice you will betray me thrice because jesus knew these disciples can't handle the pressure that is going to come and the pressure in the language of jesus he said it is the temptation temptation to live temptation to go forward you know in the garden of gethsemane jesus was about to go and cry out to his heavenly father and he called three people peter james and john and said come i want you to come and pray with me pray for me you are praying we are praying how many hours one hour just pray so that you don't fall into temptation that was the language of jesus pray that you don't fall into temptation jesus knew there was a temptation that is going to come either choose death or you choose jesus that is the greatest temptation either choose death or choose jesus peter was asked this question were you with jesus you speak like a galilean 
for sure you should have been with Jesus. You see the language style of these disciples also changed when they were with Jesus. The rough people started talking the language how Jesus used to talk. That would be one among the reasons these 12 looked like Jesus. They would have been dressing like Jesus. They would have been talking like Jesus. Romans wanted one among them to come out of the flock so that he can betray and they found Judas. You know, if somebody says, you know, I'm not very popular, but still somebody says, catch Pastor Binu and beat him up. I don't know, you know, how many will call somebody else and beat him up thinking that he's Binu. Nowadays, you know, you have the pictures, they have the scanners and all those things. Those days, Romans would have seen Jesus. Jesus was one among the popular rabbis of those times. He was going into the temple talking and that is the reason Jesus said, why are you coming with clubs and swords? I was in the temple talking with you and you never did this. But Lord, the time has come. And he gave himself to these people. So there was one person by like Judas saying, Peter may look like Jesus, but he is not Jesus. Thomas may look like Jesus, but he is not Jesus. So what you need to do is, it's night. You know, there's no electricity. It is way, way before Thomas Alva Edison invented the electric bulb. It is pitch dark in Gethsemane. And now one person by Judas is coming out and saying, I'm going to kiss that fellow. Once I kiss, what is the language Judas uses? Sometimes you miss out that. Please take him carefully. What is it? Please take him. Even in the betrayal of Judas, he's having a great heart and saying, probably don't beat him here. Don't put him down here. Please take him out carefully. Now Judas goes, hugs, kisses, and immediately... The next action into Good Friday happens. Jesus is being taken. He could not withhold the pain of what he has done. What did Judas do? I would have thought two people, Peter and Judas, both made mistakes. One with the fear of death. One with the temptation of money. Both fell, both betrayed, both denied. But one person did something which Judas never did. People don't understand how Judas became a bad person. And Peter, the first pope of the first church, how did it all change? One thing that Peter did changed his life forever. He repented. He repented and said, Oh my master, I should not have done it. He looked at Jesus. And Jesus looked at him. The change was that. He took the time. We all make mistakes. We all muck it up. We all betray Jesus in one point or the other. But the difference between Judas and Peter was, Peter looked into the eyes of Jesus. And Jesus looked into the eyes of Peter and there was a sense of forgiveness. But what happened to Judas? He cut him off from the land of the living. He did not want anybody to see him, nor he wanted to see anybody. He chose a wrong path. And the first suicide of the New Testament happens when Judas goes and kills himself. He cut him off from the land of the living. But why all this happened? Because their dreams never came into fruitation. I don't blame the disciples. Because that was their prime. That was their life. They were called rebel leaders probably. With all that they followed, Jesus now I come to the third personality. Call the people who killed 
Jesus. I put them all together. One of the group killed Jesus because of the fear that many will go away from our group and they will become the followers of Jesus. This is the language the Pharisees and the people of the temple said. Now, how long can we keep quiet? Lazarus has come alive. People are running behind him. Even Lazarus is proclaiming, I was dead, now I am alive. So now people are going behind him. If we do not kill him, our temples will become empty. Our synagogues will become empty. Our influence on the people will go off. Romans will look below and we are out of value. So they wanted to kill Jesus. They found a time and they used this time to kill Jesus. So one group of people for their benefit they wanted to kill Jesus. Think about the king who put Jesus into all this painful trial while he was about to sentence Jesus his wife came and said this man is a righteous man you should not play any part in this man's death what did our wonderful man called Pilate do he washed his hands and he said I don't have a part in this innocent man's death. And he washed his hands and he declared Jesus to be sentenced. One man called Barabbas was released and Jesus was sentenced on the cross. Now I come back to the another group called the thieves on the cross. They were thieves. They were bad people. Some interpreters say they are not thieves but they are rebels. That is what we read in the gospel of Mark. They were rebels. They rebelled against the Roman Empire and that is the reason Jesus the biggest rebel was put alongside two other rebels. One rebel even on the cross, even when he was dying, did not acknowledge who this great man on the middle cross was. But the other man said, we have done mistakes. We would have done things that are wrong. But this man has not done anything. He is an innocent man. And not only that, he said, Will you me remember me in your kingdom? So that man, that rebel, or that thief, or that bad person, acknowledge Jesus is the Lord. He never got baptized. He never went to church. He never heard the Bible. He never did things that you and I do. But one thing he did was acknowledge Jesus. And once he acknowledged Jesus, his position changed. We all can die. We all can die. I did not say we all will die. Because I believe in our lifetime, Jesus will come. But if Jesus doesn't come, we may die. We will die. And once we die, we will be going into this earth. Somebody said, just like birth, death is a process. Yesterday I was talking to one of the sisters who lost her mother a couple of weeks back. She was talking to me and telling me how things started unfolding. Mother died, but nobody knew that she died. She was sitting silent because they were not medical people. They did not check her pulse. The only thing that they thought was, she's still warm. She's okay. She's closing her eyes. She's not talking. But little did they know, she had already passed. Just like birth has 
certain parts. Death has certain parts. Death doesn't come like this. It takes some parts and comes. Birth of a child. It's a process that involves. It's a process from the ovum and the sperm. To the culmination of the conceivement of a baby. In a form like you and me. When we were babies. But what? It's a process of nine months. It's a process. Death is also a process. I put it up like this. Once your time is up. The breath that God has given to you. It will be gone. That's the first stage of death. That breath will be gone. And you become silent. That is the first step of death. Once immediately you die like. The second part is the body takes into itself. The warmth, the heat of the body just vanishes. We have some doctors here. They say it would take near about 20 to 22 minutes for the heat of the body to go off from a dead body. That's the second death. The third death, the process of death, I'm saying. You don't start stinking. You, your body would never grow bigger in split seconds. But it will take four to five days for your body to start decaying. Your identity will start going off. And that is the third stage of death. There are certain things that will never die even when you die. Some things will not melt off even when you melt off. That is something that God has given to you. The name that is above every name. Because death could not hold him up. Tomb could not hold him up. You are a child of Jesus. Death cannot take away that position called a child of Jesus. My name can vanish. Everything can vanish. But one thing will not vanish. That is the position that I have received to be a child of Jesus. How did I get that? I got it because he finished something on the cross of Calvary. My sins have been taken off. I am no more a sinner. Come on, declare it. I want everybody to declare it. I am no more a sinner. That is the reason Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Anybody who accepts Jesus Christ as their personal savior, you are a child of Jesus. No more sin has a hold over you. You are no more a sinner. You look the same as anybody else in the world. But there is one difference in you. That you are not a sinner anymore. The devil will be not afraid of anybody walking on the planet earth. But he is afraid of you. Why? You are a person who is righteous. You are a righteous person living on the planet earth. Purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the second death. Bible says in the book of Revelation. The second death. The death with camphor and fire and sulfur is not going to have a hold upon you devil knows that he is only having some time on this planet earth but when he looks at you he knows you are going to live for eternity you are going to live with the king of kings and that is the reason he plays pranks with you he tries to twist you he tries to put you down but understand Jesus finished it on the cross of Calvary. Your sin has been taken off. Your curse has been taken off. No more curse. We are not living in the world of curse. But we are living in the world of blessing. Come on everybody. Come on let's stand up to our feet. As we are about to finish off. Uh, we say loudly. I am no more in the land of curse. But I live in the land of the living. When people said. Death is the end. 
Jesus changed it and said, no, 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 no. Death is not the end. Those who believe in me, even if you die, you will live. Jesus changed that verdict of the natural phenomenon saying, every man, every woman who is born will die. Jesus said, no, 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 no. It is a natural phenomenon. It is a phenomenon of the world. But the phenomenon that I come and give is a phenomenon from heaven. Those who believe in me, even if they die, they shall live. Colossians chapter number 3, when you go back home, please read it. We are no more alive. We are dead in Christ. One day will come. Just like Jesus rose up from the death into glory, we will rise up into the glory and the time is not too far the things around us are calling out for the coming of Jesus anytime Thessalonians chapter number 4 talks about the second coming of Jesus when Jesus comes the ones who are dead in Christ will rise up first then who are alive on this planet earth will be transformed in a twinkle of an eye and we will be taken up into heaven. What a glorious day it will be. Come on, as we are about to celebrate the holy table in a couple of minutes, we just want to remember some of the things that we were hearing. How did that day, which was painful for certain people, a day that was filled with certain selfish ambitions of certain people changed out to be good for me because of what Jesus said on the cross. He did it. He did it. It was hard, but he went and did the will of the Heavenly Father. When we celebrate the Holy Table, what we are doing is we are remembering what Jesus did for us. I thought there is no better day than the day that people around the world talks about the passion of Jesus on this particular day. Why we need to do these days? As I said last Sunday, it was so customary for the families to tell their children of what they need to be doing. They need to clean up the house on a Passover day. No yeast should be found in any form which comes from wheat. They had to tidy it up. Now, the journey of Exodus happened way, 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 way before the birth of Jesus. But even today, the Jews around the world practice it because it was handed over to their children. Only very few Jews have left the practice of what they should be doing because it was handed over. Every celebration that the Bible speaks has to be handed over to our children in the right way. Otherwise, the world will be a very deceptive world will teach them the wrong things and our children will go behind it. And I pray Bethel Church, our church will stand up true to what the Bible teaches on the Passion Week and help our children to understand their righteousness is not by the good deeds but it is by the blood of Jesus. Our position is not because of what our parents have done. It is because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Our names are not what we are having because of what our parents have given. It is because a person called Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. As long as Christianity is alive on the planet earth and the church here on the planet earth, let us not use this day as a holy day. Let us use it as a holy day. And transfer these lessons to our generations to come. And make it as a practice to give these stories to our children.
otherwise children will run behind santa claus on a christmas they will run behind bunnies and easter eggs on an easter day i pray we will think about the cross we will think about jesus and we will submit ourselves when we are celebrating the good friday let's pray together father i thank you for this wonderful table that is right in front of us holy spirit thank you lord for talking to us thank you for finishing certain things that adam and eve started we live in a world which is filled with greed and envy and jealousy lord i pray just like colossians 3 says let us die from all those things of the world all the temptations the world puts into our life and follow in your footsteps father i bless these elements as your people partake it we will only remember you and remember the sacrifice you have done thank you in jesus mighty name we pray on the day that he was shown he took the bread he broke it and he gave it to his disciples we partake from the holy table just remembering the beatings the abuses that my lord your lord our god went to he did not consider himself equal with god philippians chapter number 2 talks about he made himself as nothing he emptied himself and became a human just to fulfill this purpose and he knew that he was fulfilling the plan of god upon the humanity as we take from the bread and from the cup and we participate together remember he is no more dead that is one among the reasons we say it is a good friday he is no more dead he is alive he conquered death he conquered everything that the world put on him and he bled he died he was crucified and he resurrected when we come back on sunday we will talk about the story of the resurrection and i pray that as we partake from this holy table let us thank god for the sacrifice come on sing together Oh Lord you search me You know my Yeah.
particular day we'll do something different cross stands as a symbol of forgiveness Jesus himself cried out forgive them Lord for they do not know what they are doing as you go out from this place on this Friday I pray you will never hate anybody. If you have certain people that have put you down, backstabbed you, crushed your spirit, talked behind you, insulted you, tarnished your name, even to the point that they put you to death, this is a moment. Say to the Lord, I will forgive them. As we go out of this place, there should be not even one person out here who will feel bad about anybody and say to Jesus, Jesus, I have given that person into your hands. I have forgiven that person. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me my sin. I forgive that person's sin. I forgive that person's mistake and you will walk out of this place without even a small seed of it in your life. I do it right now. Come on, let's pray together. Just a minute. Just 
you may be able to even visualize those people in your brain and say I forgive that person it can be your husband it can be your ex-husband it can be your ex-wife it can be your your relatives it can be your colleagues it can be your family members just bring them to you and say I forgive them I forgive them you will be surprised over something that God is doing in your life he is going to resurrect your name he is going to resurrect your position he is going to bring you out of that mighty pit that nobody else can take you out you are going to come out of that situation as a ruler of the situation you are going to shout out no more pain no more sickness no more sorrow i have conquered it all thank you jesus for this beautiful moment where we could come together and give our pains into your hands give our sorrows into your hands because you know it lord you went through it you know my pain you know the people who betrayed you know the mother who was crying and following me you know the disciples that lost every hope but father on the day of easter everybody's joy came back father i pray this pain will be very momentary this tears will be very momentary the powerful glory of god let it descend upon your children over this weekend and i pray as we step into the sunday that we celebrate the resurrected lord i pray we will come with testimonies of joy testimonies of celebration and i pray father lord from today onwards we will lead a glorious life we will lead a victorious life we will lead a joyful life and we thank you for that all glory and honor we give unto you in jesus mighty name we pray amen